are you both? Juan Carlos, welcome. It's so great to have you on our show. Thank you. Good morning, afternoon, evening to everybody. Thank you, Brian, Nitsan, and Julia for uh, hosting. I appreciate it. And Nitsan, it's always good to, to see you um, again. Um, so, yeah, Nitsan, how are you doing today? Are you excited for today's show? Yes, I'm. I'm my, my heart beats. Uh, um, you can hear them probably from there. I'm, I'm very excited about this show, a very special uh, uh, moment and uh, looking forward for it. Thanks everyone for joining. And I just want to remind the audience that in a bit, probably about 15 minutes time, we're going to be demoing live the, the bot and what it can do. But do ask us some questions. Ask us, ask us the sort of question that you might want to ask, you might get to do. For example, I'll give you an example that um, I came up with earlier is I got an employee working in the US on an L1 visa. Uh, they're an Indian national working in the US and we need to terminate. What are the immigration implications? OK, that's the sort of question. And write a letter to explain to that employee what the implications are. That's the sort of question we might deal with. Or it might be a question, you know, other questions like that. It could be on pet policy, which is one I think has already come in or it could be on design and assignment policy or come up with, you know, whatever, explain something in layman's terms. Uh, so do come up with some questions and we'll pick a few of them and we'll try them out later on. You are going to be amazed when, when you see what can be done these days. Anyway, let's start off before we get into that, uh, Juan Carlos, it's such an honor to have you on the show. But for those people who don't know you, tell us a bit about yourself because you're originally from... Quito, Ecuador, aren't you? But there you are in Redmond, Washington. <laughs> Tell us about your career journey. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I, I come very, very proudly from a very humble beginning. Um, I was born and raised in Quito, Ecuador. And basically, I went, I'm an economist by profession. So I did my um, a college over there, working on, on banks. My mind was into finance. I, I also had the great opportunity to work for the World Bank. And then um, as part of that opportunities, when life gives you opportunities, I, I was provided the opportunity to uh, come to the States to study. And I did an MBA in finance. And during my first year, I got hired to do portfolio management. So I was doing uh, a basically, a, I was working for a fund of funds for hedge fund companies. So my job was to establish um, basically mechanism to identify opportunities to invest. During the first year, this company was very successful, got acquired. And basically, I was in the middle of my first year of MBA, and I needed to basically remain here in the in the US and I got, I got the opportunity now to start my mobility career. That and was that around was a, that was a Carter. So you started at uh, no, I started actually with Price Warehouse Coopers, uh, okay. basically uh in the international taxation. So um I, I think from all of all of us as mobility, right? International taxation is key for us to understand the life cycle and most importantly, helping basically that at that point clients defining strategies on how to save money from a tax tax a uh, planning perspective. Uh, that, that was the beginning from a mobility perspective. And then I basically I have been progressing my career doing basically relocation management and then uh, growing exponentially due through basically opportunities, right? I'm a diverse person and they're definitely opening up the doors for the next generation of leaders uh, from a Latino background as well as other backgrounds. And, well, um, yeah, I, and we're certainly we're going to be talking about diversity next week. So all shout out <laughs> to, you know, to all the Latino I'm, members of our community. Absolutely. So I, I just want to, I'm very thankful and grateful for those of people who provide me opportunities over my career. And then I basically, I uh, moved from the partner side to the client side and leading a mobility program for some power, the, the uh, a technology alternatives for Total. And then five years ago, I got the opportunity to come to Microsoft, a great company. And just Microsoft can provide an opportunity, a person from a, a economy on development to come and lead a mobility program. So it is just um, the American dream. And I became a U.S. citizen, US citizen last year. So I have passed through the, entire, <laughs> through the entire immigration system. I came with a, basically a visitor, to, a visitor visa to do my interview for the university, do the testing went back to Ecuador, applied for the F1 visa, and then I came basically and I went through the entire process, took me around uh, 16 years. And I wanna thank all those people, my wife specifically that helped me uh, being uh, basically uh, crisp 
and with a vision to, to to do what we needed to do in order to become a US citizen this past year. You, you can't see it, Foreign Colors, but the screen is lighting up with hearts and applauses and things. Thank you. People are loving you. That you've you've got mm. you've got. There's so much warmth out there. And if there's more that you want to say, put it in the comments or hit the heart button, hit the like button, hit the applause button. And if you've got questions for Juan Carlos, then do you know shout them out in the LinkedIn, and we'll try and pull them on on stage. Um, but tell us very, very quickly, and then I want to get into some of the tech stuff. But tell us a bit about the program, because as I understand it, you told me that you managed sixteen thousand moves with just 16 people, which to my math is a ratio of a thousand to one, which is just incredible. So tell us, how do you do that? How do you manage 16,000 moves with 16 people? Yes, and, and uh, thank you. And, and I will not do anything without my team, right? Uh, the kudos to my team and uh, every opportunity that I have, I said, I'm surrounded by very smart people. I'm potentially the dumbest on the team, which is fantastic because my job is just being an enabler of this great talent. But, um, you know, the, the way that we do it, basically, is we, we handle a very outsourced program. We have the opportunity to provide empowerment to our partners. Uh, and the 16,000 basically don't include some population that we just added these past three years, which is basically business travelers. Now we have around 33,000 people that are here in the United States, basically, that my team is touching. And the way that we have That's now 16, changed the vision. Plus another 33. I mean... I all again, shout sorry? out anybody who works in mobility at Microsoft. Kudos to you. You are <laughs> the best. That is just unbelievable. Kudos to everybody at Microsoft. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, we have great leadership, number one. Uh, our leaders are amazing. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to go back to enabling a Latino from a very humble beginning and economy and development and come and lead the program and give me the opportunity to propose things uh, and they are always open. So I just want to say thank you to them. Thank you to my team. But, uh, you know, going back to the 33,000 people that we had added to the program, you know, that with the way that we have done it is we have changed the paradigm. We used to believe in mobility uh, many years ago and no fault to anybody, right? I never like to criticize prior leaders because they have a different set of, of conditions at that time. But um, we changed the paradigm of us as a, as a Microsoft mobility to develop our own technology, to empower our, our partners to develop their technology. So um, what we have done basically is we brought this new technology and basically with basically a potentially 10% of one FTE of my team. So that person who has already a full-time job added this additional 10% of responsibilities to manage this 33,000 moves. So that's the power of technology. That's the power of basically what we're trying to implement here at Microsoft with mobility, uh, enabling partners, uh, strategic partners to develop technologies that we can use and simplify basically our admin work, number one, and number two, improve the employee experience. We are looking at net promoter scores. That's very important for us to make sure that we continue uh, developing in that, in that sense. So that's the way that we do it. Absolutely, we have great partners as well. Uh, and again, the leadership, the leadership team here is fantastic. And the growing mindset that we have here at Microsoft, I make mistakes every day. My team makes mistakes every day, but we also have the mindset of learning from them and not repeating the mistakes again. And, and talking of great partners, obviously, we at Beneva are very, very proud and honored to be a partner of yours at Microsoft, uh, which allows me very neatly to segue to you, Nitsan, and bring you into, into the conversation. So tell us a bit about that partnership and maybe we could just start off by how we're using technology to optimize employee experience and just tell us a little bit about that aspect. Mitzvah. So, yeah, I'm happy to share a bit, uh, a bit on that. And, you know, we were very fortunate to work with uh, such a forward looking team as the one that uh, Juan Carlos is leading and, and, and very excited to be part uh, of that journey of digitalization and especially as all of Beneva's technology is built on Microsoft. So that has been something super important for our team to actually be able to, to further connect with Microsoft and, and probably put a lot of uh, a pride internally. Um, I, think, I think one of the things that um, you know, I, I've learned a lot from, from Juan Carlos and the team and, and your vision on digitalization um, is one that um, maybe maybe you could share a little bit uh, on that and then I can bring it to life with uh, with one or two examples of, of some, some projects that we've done. Okay, well, let's do that, Juan Carlos. So tell us a bit about digitalization and, and your vision at Microsoft. 
Absolutely. So, um, you know, during the pandemic, pandemic has redefined everything that we do, right? And it was interesting during the pandemic, the first months of the pandemic, we have a, one of our partners coming to us and said, hey, you know, we don't want to reduce our force because we want to retain this talent for the future. But they offered these resources to us and said, can you partner with them enough? Absolutely. We have a lot of ideas, a lot of, a lot of projects here. So we leverage on those resources to start what we call an employee experience journey. So at the very beginning of the pandemic, we went back to look at 10 years of data and we got some great insights. We moved or surveyed data. We had uh, basically, a, it was super performers, right? They were showing us, oh my God, the best programs that we have. We converted those scores to net promoter score and we were able to discover that, you know, those scores were not as high as we were basically measuring against other industries or other programs. So that was a big aha moment for us. We started with the assessment of the data. Somebody on my team who has a lot of uh, analytic skills was able to bring all the insights into us, have a conversation, and then we start looking on how we can, with quick wins, improve the program. We start with communication. We reduce our emails to our employees, trying to be succinct, trying to digitalize that experience into how can we reach the employee at the right, right moment. So we did that. We work also with uh, our a team, another team members of in my in my team, to lead basically a team identity work. We created our identity five years ago with colors, etc. But this person took it to the next step, which how can we reduce the communications, make sure that we digitalize that, and reduce the amount of emails that employees were receiving. That enabled us to basically have a focus on how can we improve the experience. So we start. We joined the HR Digital Transformation at Microsoft in 2021, and uh, we share or as a team or vision on we want to build this ecosystem where our employees are going to receive the information at the right time. Number one, and number two, and most importantly, has to be succinct, has to be crisp, and enable the employees to make decisions quickly and get the information where they need it. That's the vision. But at the same time, we were mindful of. For us, all of us, all the people on the phone, mobility must be the most important thing. We, yes, that's that's the world to us. But we also, we went with the mindset of from the hire to retire, we're one, one piece. So our mindset from a digitalization was to land whatever we're going to create into these big uh, HR systems that are going to handle the employee experience. So that has been the journey for us to make sure that we are concatenated to the bigger development of our human resources technology here at Microsoft. And probably you have here about a Viva or a platform that is connecting with teams that is empowering us to have access to insights. And that's the future that we have basically um, did a blueprint here at Mobility to say, okay, we're gonna, mat we're gonna meet with that bigger blueprint and Mobility will be one of those Viva potentially uh, apps that is going to help basically reaching out to the employees at the right time. Okay, so let's take some of that. And I want to get really granular on this because, I mean, it's amazing. We talk about how technology is going to transform or is transforming mobility. I'd like to give the audience some real specific examples. Nitsa, maybe there's a couple of examples you can share of where technology has made a real difference and new, new technology that people haven't seen before. Yeah, so let's let's look into into some of these examples, and I love how how with Microsoft, right? They start by looking at the data and then and then driving the decision from there. That's also the approach we we like to take, and um, and we looked into automating of manual processes um, about streamlining this to the employees, so there are less touch point, less um, more self serves, more the ability for me to personalize the experience as an employee. I can decide if I want to get things done myself or if I want to talk to someone. I can decide when I access it, how do I access it, from which device. It moves the power to the employee, but still with, um, with a lot of support. So that was an, a very interesting approach in that, that we liked a lot. If I'm looking at one specific example to talk about is about payment digitalization. Um, and that was a process that um, traditionally the, um, some of the uh, payments were sent via um, cards plastic cards uh, by post and we that, that took time to issue and 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 took time until it, it got to the employee and and they and how, many, how many are you talking about how many plastic cards were being issued a lot <laughs> thousands yeah yes and 
and that's those, a lot of plastic. That's a lot of plastics, a lot of cards, and and, and also it took time, right? Because from the time when the sign off was okay, now you can get the money until the employee can actually get that money. A few weeks would pass, right? And and then they wouldn't be able to use it anywhere, everywhere. Sorry, right? Just in places where you they could use the card. Um, and we've completely digitalized that process, right? So moved it to a hundred percent AI. A artificial intelligence driven process, which means the employee um, got into the platform the second that their payment, that there is a, a green light for them for whether it's visa or other uh, legal requirements that allowing them to access the funds, they can enter their bank account detail and get paid within minutes. And that's fully automated. It gives the employee more choice so they could choose how they want to get paid, whether it's bank account, whether it's a uh, um, a digital wallet, whether it's a, 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 a still the plastic card, um, and and it also right. So it happened. It, it made everything a lot faster, a lot easier, a lot smoother, and and with better compliance. But what was the one of the interesting uh, wins of that project is the impact on sustainability on the environment, right? Because we were able to reduce the sending of the post, the printing of the pages alongside that, et cetera. There were more than 1,200 um, kilograms of CO2 that are removed every year from just from one disposal. And we're talking about many, many processes. I'm focusing on one, but just from this process in terms of the environment, which connects well right, to Microsoft. Microsoft has a, has a phenomenal, very inspiring tar- a goal to be a, not carbon neutral, but carbon negative. Um, by 2030, right? Yeah. And this will only happen through digitalization, right? And, and, and that's the journey um, that's their own. And that's, that was, you know, I think, one example where with mobility and with digitalization, we went one step forward in that f- fascinating journey. Yes, Brian, and I, if I can add very quickly there, um, you know, as part of this employee experience, and thank you, need some for you know, sharing the power of, of, of the partnership there. But um, for, for us as Microsoft, right, changing this paradigm on, on enabling um, companies to help us with technology, right? Because Microsoft is great. We, we, we are great in what we do, our technology. We're empowering our uh, basically people to do more. And our CEO has made it clear of democratizing this to reach more people. We're trying to emulate the same thing and, and, and mobility. And as part of this journey, Right, we were looking for opportunities to uh, be agile. Right, uh, our companies who are big take some time to move, to innovate, which is which is totally fine because you know there is privacy, there is security, there is all these great things that we need to check. But also, we were looking for an opportunity to innovate, right, and trying to bring experiences that can provide quick wins through that employee experience and aligning with basically consumer-based technology, the way that we are used to buy things. That's, I think that's where, you know, this came to a, a good match of need from us coming from the pandemic, trying to make an impact. And, you know, we, as the economy has starting to go in a direction that, you know, hopefully we, we are seeing some lights of going in the other side, you know, we need to reduce force as Microsoft and the cost has been a big factor for us. How can we, take this type of technologies to reduce costs, provide some savings and improve the employee experience. So the the two contradictory uh, objectives, right? Employee experience, sometimes you think that you need to improve the cost, so increase the cost to provide a better experience um, while you are increasing the cost. So I think the two things have been able to be accomplished here, right? We have a a net promoter score of hires and then the cost of the program, basically we're looking to continue reducing as we continue going. Yeah, absolutely. What I'm going to do now, we've got, I mean, we've got 370 people watching us, and that's just on LinkedIn. That's without adding in the people who are watching us on YouTube and Facebook. So, you know, we've got hundreds and hundreds of people watching us, and they want to hear about some of the really cool new technology that's coming out here. And I want to sort of get into that. And, in fact, we're going to show some of it as well. But before we do, you guys at Microsoft really are at the the cutting edge, the leading edge of this. And I know one of the things that you've got, um, coming out from Microsoft, which is going to change not just our industry, but it's going to change the world, is a thing called Microsoft Copilot, um, which works with GPT. So tell us about Microsoft. And it, and guys, if you haven't heard about Microsoft Copilot, you will. 
Um, so tell us a bit about, you've heard it here first. So tell us a bit about Microsoft Copilot. Absolutely. So let me start a little bit with a little history. Hopefully it will not take me a long time. But when I joined Microsoft five years ago, my leader uh, at that time um, invited me to a couple of meetings where, uh, for, for, from my exposure perspective. And one of those meetings was with a, a board that was being conformed to basically have an AI board. Right. And, and it was a, a great opportunity five years ago with we as Microsoft, we already were thinking about uh, how come we are going to harness this power that is coming in the future. So Microsoft has been working for, 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 for five years, probably more on this. And, and what we have released this past month has been fascinating. Right. And you have here Satya Nadella in multiple interviews. And I think it was just this week on the Wall Street Journal when he went to talk about, you know, the power that we're trying to bring to, to the to, to the to the world, which is um, empowering people who are at the center to do better their jobs. It is said that we spend uh, in a week around uh, basically eight hours in meetings, probably more. I spend more than that. Uh, and that basically put a lot of pressure on getting things done. Emails, chats, all these different things that we are having from a productivity perspective ended up costing us in average here in the United States around, assuming a $60,000, $70,000 salary, I think the number was around thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 that we're spending every week that employees are basically spending on uh, doing all these different checks back and, and forward. So what at Microsoft we're doing is we're bringing artificial intelligence and you know we partnered with OpenAI and we're bringing ChatGPT into a control environment where basically uh, it is enabling uh, the employees or the companies to empower them to do more. And what we what we mean with this, ChatGPT, just to give you some statistics, took basically four months to get into 100 million users. TikTok took nine months to get into the same number. Instagram took 30 months to get to that number. So we're talking about the next generation of really um, technology uh, leap. And for us, what we're trying to bring to the market is, and right now we're basically beta testing with some companies, is the power of the copilot that it will be infused in our Microsoft tools. Think about emails, uh, chats, documents, PowerPoint presentations. And what we're trying to do is, trying to bring the power of everything that we have done in the past to summarize and be able to help us in navigating our organizations. We call it co-pilot because we are the pilots. The fear of losing jobs that I have here in the market, right? Yes, there is some jobs that potentially are going to disappear, but the center that we're trying to bring is how can we help you do better? From an Excel perspective, it said that around 10 to 15% of the capabilities are used by super users. With Copilot, we will bring at least a 40, 50% to our regular users. So Excel is gonna be helping you. Just think about it when you are preparing for a meeting. And when we were preparing for this meeting, I was just sharing an example that I'm gonna share with all of you guys. If I have a meeting with a specific partner and I have been emailing partners about issues, escalations, improvements of technology, we have a contract coming, we have potentially a, so, some, some industry conversations that we have, I have been that person, etc. So in preparing for my meeting tomorrow with that partner, I go and start basically asking my co-pilot to prepare me for that meeting. The power of the technology that we're trying, that we're bringing to the market is that technology is going to be able to read all our communications and be able to be smart to give me a summary of how I have to be prepared for tomorrow. Now, the technology is going to give me this draft. It's up to me to basically make the necessary edits and be able to walk into the meeting and, and, and drive the meeting based on what this technology has brought to light for me. Now, from an HR perspective, uh, you know, we're looking at this on six key elements for my great employee experience, right? Empowerment, grow, purpose, focus, connection, and well-being. That's our mindset from a product perspective to make sure that we have a very compelling tool that put the person at the center and enable us, for us as mobility, it will enable us to have that those superpowers that I think, Brian, you mentioned in your show about well, how we can get these superpowers at the center of us as a mobility Exactly, uh, and I think now, now, now's the time. Let's actually show some of this. Now, um, 
what we're going to show you now, we're going to show you a little introductory video, and then we're going to go into it. This is Benevo GPT, so it's using OpenAI technology. It's been trained or it can be trained on a specific company's policies. It is super, super cool. Um, and in fact, what we're doing is it's something we're developing in conjunction with uh, Microsoft. But what we're doing is we're opening a wait list for other companies who want to be involved. So you're going to see something that uh, you'll never have seen before, I promise you. And this is the future. So today is a milestone for our industry. So I'm going to run the video and then we're going to show it to you live. But as I said, if you've got any questions you want to ask, ask it to do something then pop them in the comments box and we're going to pick on a few of those questions and try and show you the answers live. So here we go. Let's find out. Introducing you to Benevo GPT. Introducing Benevo GPT, your superpower for global mobility. GPT and AI is transforming the world. And now Benevo GPT is here to transform global mobility. Mobility is complex. Managing numerous vendors who communicate with employees, it's difficult to catch issues before they escalate. With so many messages and conversations happening every day. But with Benevo GPT, you gain a powerful new superpower. You get immediate access and a summary of every conversation between an employee, a vendor, or HR. Even phone calls are included. And it doesn't stop there. We analyze all conversations and perform sentiment analysis to identify issues. Less manual work, more strategic work. But that's just the beginning. You can even use Benevo GPT to ask it anything you would like, such as drafting a communication, finding immigration rules, or checking a tax position. It can analyze qualitative feedback to identify potential policy changes or satisfaction, and much more. What sets Benevo GPT apart is its commitment to ethical AI. Benevo ensures legal compliance and eliminates the risk of discrimination, giving you the peace of mind you need to do your job with confidence. So if you're ready to unlock your superpowers and take your global mobility game to the next level, join the beta waitlist today. Benevo GPT, your superpower for global mobility. Okay, so Nitsen, I really want to bring you into the conversation at this point because you and your team have been working night and day on this. And I know it's only in in beta form at the moment. Uh, and there is a wait list there for companies that want to get involved. But maybe tell us a bit about it. And then what I'd like you to do is share your screen and actually show it. Let, let's actually get into it live. Let, let's get people to really, really understand how this is going to transform our world. Sure, let's do that. So as, as Juan Carlos said, right, this technology of AI and GPT is, is transforming the world. We are bringing it to mobility with Benevo GPT. Benevo GPT is not one feature or one bot. It's a set of tools that are all leveraging that technology that was built by Microsoft and OpenAI. And it gives us a set of things that we've seen in the video. And we'll jump into the bot in, the, in a second because it's part of that. But before we go into the bot, I'll just explain some of the other things we've seen in the video. One of them was the ability to analyze every conversation that is happening between the employee, the uh, mobility team, the, the, the suppliers, the partners, all of that to have first to have it on a, you know, a single place. That's the already there um, coming. And what the GPT allows us to do is to get a summary of those conversations. So we can see if someone calls me now and asks, what's going on with that employee? I don't know, I don't need anymore to contact my providers in order to find out. I just have a summary of exactly what's going on there. And then that technology also identify what could go wrong there and flag it to me. So I can prioritize my day and be a lot more efficient because I can see these are the cases at risk and how I can, how I can jump into them. So that's, a first look into that, um, a lot more, but let's jump into the bot. I know that. And also, as I, as I understand it, is that, you know, imagine a world where all your policies, all your processes are in the, uh, in the artificial intelligence. They're there. So, for example, if you need to do something like write uh, an assignment letter or to explain what the escalation process is, you don't have to go through and look at the policy. It'll just give you the answer based on your own particular company-specific policies. So it's not like OpenAI, which is using publicly available information. That's there as an underpin. 
but it's actually got your own specific company information. That's what our wait list is all about, because there's going to be a prioritization of which companies get this technology for. So, yeah, I'm, I'm so, so excited. I'm sure the audience is. It says, do you have it in different languages? The answer is it's any language you want. Um, but let's just go, go into Nit, Nitsan, just show us a bit, a, a, a bit about this. All right, so I've shared my, my screen if you want to bring it. Um... Yeah, hang on one second. Let me just bring this up. Okay, here we go. This is, this is oh. it. This is, okay, so this is GPT, Benevo GPT specific. This is the world's first AI GPT aimed specifically at the mobility industry and aimed specifically at your company if you're on that wait list. Exactly. And what it does, it, it takes those capabilities, those amazing capabilities that many of us have experienced with chat GPT and bring them into life in mobility. So it's a special tool that is trained about mobility and trained about the company's specific processes and, and, and needs. So let's look at some of the things it, it can do. Um, I'm not the fastest uh, typer, so I prepared here one that I've just copied. And so let's, oh, let's read out that question. I need to send yeah, let, me, let me increase my screen because there were a few questions that came from the audience, right? There was a question there um, that I, I've that I've pre preloaded here, but we'll see. Okay. If you let, let me just let me just take that then. So the question from the audience was I, I can't remember who asked it, but the, the, the question was, let's just scroll up so I can see it. Um, yeah. Hang on. Can a Jordanian system work from Jordan for a UAE project with a UAE company offer? And we've got an answer, an answer there. So let's pick up some others. Yeah. What about one um, that's from Sean? I'll give you another one. Right? I need to send an, an announcement to my company employees about a new relocation benefit, additional 15 days of temporary housing paid by the company. And at the moment, it's 15 days. So give me five catchy titles and drive the content of the announcement. And that's what it does for me. It gives me now the catchy titles I could use. I could choose the one I like. And then it can draft now the, the announcement, right? That that will go out and I can now edit it. So it, it doesn't replace us. It changed our roles from writers to editors. Um, now I want to draft a, draft a policy for uh, policy. Hey, you, can see, you, you can see this is live. Let me see Nitsan's typing. So yes, yeah. you can see my my typing skills. So I can I can continue the conversation. I don't need to start from scratch explaining now everything. I just say, hey, draft a policy uh, here, and it will go ahead and do that for me and leverage my existing policies uh, types to be able to take that. And while it does it, we look at some of the other uh, questions we asked. There was a question there about. Um, about Switzerland. Can I work in Switzerland? Uh, and that question didn't, didn't say which nationality. So I, I guessed a US citizen, right, for a period of time before I apply for a work permit was one of the questions we received. Um, and the answer was no. That, that question was from Trish McDonald at Westinghouse. Yeah. Yeah. And that answer was no. So, so I asked it, so which nationalities can do it? And and it says actually none, right? But it's easier for EU nationals to get that. So it gives us this um, quick insight into, into the knowledge. It does work for us. It helps us draft things we do. And it also can be specific to, to things we, I, I need to do, for example, on, on Benevo, right? So um, let's say I'm, I'm using Benevo. And then I'll ask, for example, for a guide about using Benevo. So it allows me to, um, to really get the superpower of a tool that changed my role from writer to an editor, from someone who can never look again at an empty page. I know for me, the most daunting task I can do is to start something from scratch because where do I start? And that's normally when I go, I'll check emails, I'll see what messages I got on Teams, on Slack, on whatever. I'll continue to work, but not on the task I need to do. Now I can just ask that request and start from there. Um, and I can say, let's say, um, how do I initiate an employee on the Benevo platform? Right, so if, if I'm using Benevo and I'm not sure how to do that, I can ask and it will just tell me how to do that. So that's kind of the differences between 
this Beniva GPT bot to, to uh, a standard a, a, a chat GPT. It is trained on specific content. This one was trained on how to use Beniva. It's trained about specific global mobility uh, needs, about tax, immigration. We've added to that. We've added to that. Um, uh, the ability to have each company's policies and process to do with an exception. I know how it can draft for me any communication that I need to provide. And, and it's like talking to someone, right? It's very, very easy and give me those fast answers, kind of acting both as my knowledge base, as my colleague who can help me draft things and, and, and get smart work done. And um, and answer questions. Let's, let's, let's try and knit sound because I, mean, I think a point I would make, I mean, and it's well documented, is that you know there's got to be a level of caution with uh, GPT answers, especially you know some of the stuff you will want to run past uh, a legal advisor or immigration advisor or tax advisor. But think of it in the same way that the guides are out there at the moment for you know the big four firms have got their tax and immigration guides out there, and you can look at those. What this is doing is it's an intelligent look and it's giving answer. Where it really comes into its own is when you actually want it not just to answer a question, but to do something like draft something. So, for example, uh, I don't know if you've got it there, Nitsan, but one we, example we looked at, I know before, was draft a letter to an employee who might be you know, an Indian national working in the US who's been terminated, explaining what the immigration implications are of that termination. And so that sort of thing... Uh, and again, if there's questions people want to ask, then, then do. But that sort of thing, it drafts these amazing emails, which obviously you want to review. But think about it as having your own personal, your own personal assistance. I'm interested in comments from the audience as well. Yeah. So, so I, I, I gave it another question, right? So I have an employee going on a business trip from Iraq to India for three days. Um, and, and the question is, which visa should I get to them? And they have Iraqi and American citizenship, which one should I use? And it tells me, right, that for a short trip to India, the employee will need to obtain an e-business visa. American citizens are eligible to that, while Iraqi are not. So I know which one I should use here in order to get that uh, uh, specific. And I, I see here questions that this it is uh, immigration only. No, this is going to cover all the areas of mobility. Immigration is... Well, let, 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 yeah, let's talk um, uh, mm. tax. What, what, what about... Um, let's put something generic. Um, please explain tax equalization in layman terms. I'm Brian. While Nitsan is typing, I think this is the beauty of it. This is natural language, right? I think we're moving away from the, the capabilities for you to become a programmer, which is totally fine. But I think now you are at the center of asking the questions and ask, and basically the computer power trying to bring all the information and uh, bringing that in, 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 a, in a capsule to you. Here we are. I love this. Please explain tax equalization to a nine-year-old child. That's brilliant. Tax equalization is like making sure everyone gets a fair share of candy at a party. <laughs> Imagine me. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. So, Imagine you will get five candies each. Now you go to another friend's house for a party, but they give seven candies for each person. Uh, that's, that's classic. Um, and if we wanted to, we could say, you know, explain it in, in rhyming verse or something, which obviously we're not going to do it in, in, in the real world. Um, but hopefully people are getting an idea now of what this can, what this technology can do. And as I emphasized, the difference between this and open AI, which everybody hopefully is starting to use, is that this is trained on your own specific policies. So, you know, whatever your company is, it's your policies, your processes, your programs, and it will work and design answers for you and will actually, to me, the benefit is it allows you to be more strategic. Because I think one of the problems that we all face is that we are so busy being busy, we are so busy doing the urgent stuff, we don't really have enough time to do the important stuff. And the only way to do the important stuff is to do the busy, the, the urgent stuff and the busy stuff more efficiently. And back to you, Juan Carlos, because I said you're managing a team of 
16 people looking after 16,000 moves and more if we add in business travellers, presumably this sort of technology is an absolute godsend for you. Absolutely. Yes. And as a company, right, we have to, we also have to be really careful on how do we move to the next level, right? I think the talent that we have um, need to um, become the more strategic, right, in, in more, more advice. And that's what this, this technology can provide them, right? And, and I think the reskilling of the talent is going to be critical in the future, right? This data is going to be provided to you. So what do you do with that? And how do you bring people together to to empower them to do more so think about somebody having a business uh, sorry a performance review and the person now is is talking about hey you know I, I'm, I'm interested to potentially explore opportunities in different locations maybe these three locations so through artificial intelligence the idea is to bring that insight and bring the mobility program for example at the front end my team doesn't have to be involved in the first conversations this technology can be involved at that time to empower the person who is asking the questions to give them tools, for example, about a preparedness kit. Well, you're thinking about an international opportunity. Have you, first of all, do you have a passport? What happened with your uh, basically marriage certificate if you are married, with your documentation, with your school information, all these different things that it might take some time from an immigration perspective to get. Now we're putting this information at the fingertips of people. So from 16,000 people, potentially the idea is to it reached 220,000 people, all employees, democratizing this to mobility. And the way that we as Microsoft were trying to think is, you know, from an employee experience platform, right? And we're focusing in communications, announcement, news, events, get that information to the right person. How many people in the mobility industry are creating newsletters every month to educate people in the in, in, in internally? So think about that's going to be done and it's going to reach to the person who is asking those questions. Events, right? Training, uh, news, etc. I think about I receive around 19 alerts every day about of my security team. Today there were some 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 uh, manifestations or some I don't say strikes, but people in London, right? So think about you now as a traveler or as a mobility person, as an employee, having access to that information. You don't have to go to an app, but information is depending on where you are. They're gonna give it to you. Company resources, right? The employee portals, the apps. All these complexities that we have created on technology, not just Microsoft, but all these companies, which is fantastic, right? We are competing and we need to integrate. It's not anymore about just the Microsoft. We need to think about the Salesforce, the Googles, all these companies that we're going to have to integrate in a way. And from a mobility perspective, that's the next challenge for the oil industry. All partners are going to have to integrate and they're going to have to be able to partner together to put the employee at the center and the programs at the center. Insights, knowledge, communities, well-being, growth and development. Those are the things that we are uh, putting this behind to provide a really good experience through this uh, Microsoft 365 compiled system, which combines the power of large language models with natural language. So we have basically the power of Microsoft working for all of us. Uh, Satya Nadella, early this week, when they, he did this interview with the Wall Street Journal, he was very humble. But at the same, at the same time, he is looking at opportunity even from a search engine capabilities or Bing technology. Or now be, be coming and, and, and you have seen the market, how the market is reacting, the competition, etc. Which is a great for everybody, for the industry, for us as Microsoft and for us, for our practitioners mobility to basically help us in this new conundrum of remote work, hybrid work. The lines in between work life and professional life have blurry. So these tools are going to help us out to really empower us to continue with work-life balance, well-being, but ultimately to do more uh, potentially with less uh, resources in the future as we continue digitalizing functions. Okay. Well, I think we're pretty much coming to the end of the show. What I do want to do is, um, so there's a comment here, I'll, uh, the loss of content, not to make conflicts with IP ownership, gives me pause. Not to mention messaging. I mean, that's probably a whole new debate that maybe we'll take on uh, an, an, another time. But actually, I think what we're trying to do is this actually allows us to have what Nitsen called the, the superpower. It, it gives us information, but it allows us to do so much more than, than, than just that. It, it, it creates the whole new future. I'm going to bring on Julia Onslow Cole to join us as we reach the top of the hour. Julia, I mean, you work in immigration. What's what? I mean, we just we, we only talk really about immigration and politics. We didn't talk about tax. But what's your 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 take on this? 
Well, it's so impressive, um, Juan Carlos, everything you said. It's really impressive, your whole career and the way you're managing mobility. I think that's incredibly impressive. Um, I, I think um, Brian, he actually rang me up earlier today and he actually read out the immigration answer to the US question. And, and I told him it was like completely accurate, but it, it did need a bit of nuancing. And I, I think, it, you know, obviously we're at an early stage, but Absolutely. I think the way that you and the way Nitsan described things are, is, is actually spot on and brilliant. I mean, what it does is it takes away some of the transactional stuff and really enables you to, you know, really concentrate on the really innovative and sort of high level care. So if you had an employee who could get all the basic information out first, you know, you could really concentrate on those, you know, difficult questions rather than, you know, having to put so much energy in everything. And I, I think both of you are, you know, you're, you're huge leaders of this whole debate. It's very impressive. Thank you. I mean, it's like it's not having a, a search engine on steroids. I mean, it's, uh, I think, a phrase that we've used before. The, you know, it takes those tax guys, those immigration guys out there, and it just takes them to a whole new level. And what it does with policy. policy. Um, so final comments, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Uh, uh, Juan Carlos. Think, yeah. Yeah. No, for me, first of all, thank you and appreciate it for everybody who they, who, who uh, join us for the session. I, I, I you know, th there is many controversial topics, and I think you know, as Microsoft, we have what we call growing mindset, so we are learning. You know, uh, the the fact that we make mistakes in the past are going to continue happening in the future. But I think the most important thing for us is we are there. We're trying to help. We're trying to empower our employees and and help companies and help people at accomplishing more that's uh, that's ultimately the goal putting the the human at the center or families whatever we believe whatever we want to do in life and have the opportunity to be more meaningful and more directed on what we're doing in professional and personal lives yeah okay i mean it's been an amazing show we've now hit our our hour so we will wind up i just wanted to remind everybody that we are back this time next week with the big one, well, another big one. It's a pretty big one today, but we've got the, the top 100 diversity champions. So if you want to find out who are Global Mobility's top 100 diversity champions as voted for by you, tune in this time next week for The View from the Top. Thank you, everybody, and especially thank you to Juan Carlos Gonzalez from Microsoft. Oh, it's been a pleasure and an honor to have you on our show today. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.